Welcome to CivilNet. My guest is Mas Ismailian. He is the chairman of the Public Council on Foreign and Security Policy here in Stepanagert nagorno karabakh He is also a member of the Civilitas Foundation Board. Uh, Masis, thank you for joining us. Thank you for coming. We are, as I said in my opening uh, words, in Stepanagert, which is the capital of nagorno karabakh uh, And Karabakh is celebrating its 23rd year of independence. Um, and since 1994, when the Russian brokered ceasefire uh, was signed by the sides, uh, we have been living in a condition that we oftentimes uh, call no peace, no war. Uh, today, the OSC Minsk Group co-chairs, uh, comprised of Russia, France and the United States, are responsible for the negotiation process, for the peace process. nagorno karabakh is not part, is not a side to the actual negotiations. Uh, and this has been something that the authorities of nagorno karabakh have been talking about for years, that without its participation in the peace process, uh, things will not move forward. Is this your position as well? I think, uh, and uh, it's uh, no doubt about it, that Nag nagorno karabakh is, is party to the conflict. And this uh, fact is, uh, uh, fixed in OEC uh, documents. For example, uh, the document from 1st of March 1995, where we can see that uh, the act, uh, chairman in office, he said uh, in, uh, after meeting of ministerial meeting, he said that there are three parties to the conflict, two state, member state of uh, OEC and another party of, of, of the conflict is Nagorno, or leadership of Nagorno Karabakh. So uh, we have in conflict we have status of conflicting party, but uh, we have also status of independent country that not recognized internationally. And uh, this situation changed in, and before uh, 1997, we uh, participated uh, as equal part with Azerbaijan and Armenia in different discussions. And at uh, that time, I was also part of Nagorno-Karabakh official delegation and uh, head of delegation at that time was foreign minister of Karabakh, uh, Arkady Hugasyan. So uh, in, uh, after uh, 1997, Karabakh uh, is it's not fair, but uh, Karabakh is outside of this process. And uh, as chairmanship said, they said that we, uh, Karabakh is involved indirectly in this process. And I think that if uh, this situation will change and the real format will be uh, established uh, or re-established, that time. Uh, this uh, negotiation could be more effective. Because uh, this is not only a question of status, who are party to the conflict or not, but uh, Karabakh is real actor in this process. And if one of the main actors uh, is not participating, it's difficult to achieve uh, some agreement and to or have progress in process. And then uh, the other question is a question of responsibility, not only rights that Karabakh uh, leadership can participate and speak about our rights and defend our interests there, but also uh, our leadership can take uh, some part of responsibility for, for, for the peace in the region. I've often heard uh, some experts in the region say that in 1994, the sides were closest to finding a solution than they are today that over the 20 years of the ceasefire, self-maintained ceasefire, um, there are no international peacekeepers uh, on the contact line. The OSC sends in um, monitoring missions, I think twice a month, but there are no peacekeepers on the ground. So it's been a self-maintained ceasefire. Do you find that to be a true statement that today the sides are farther apart and their societies? because we have a generation in Azerbaijan and a generation in Armenia who have had absolutely no contact with one another. Yeah, yeah, I think I can agree with this uh, evaluation of the situation. At that time, of course, uh, we were more closer. But uh, 
the last 20 years uh, situation changed. Azerbaijan, for example, became more richer than they uh, buying every year a lot of ammunition, armament, etc. And uh, they feel more stronger now them, themselves that it was in 1994 because that time it was a uh, situation when, uh, when uh, it, we have a uh, balance of uh, forces and this is one of the main reasons that this via agreement was signed by three parties to the conflict. As you know, uh, defense ministers of Karabakh, Azerbaijan and uh, Armenia who signed that doc document in May 1994. Uh, so, uh, unfortunately, the uh, situation is not uh, bringing us more close closer to, to, each to, other. The, to, the, to each other and to the peace. Right. Uh, I want to talk about uh, the recent uh, upscale of uh, tensions on the contact line and on the Armenia-Azerbaijan state border that took place end of July and beginning of August, leaving dozens of uh, killed soldiers and some civilian deaths as well. Following the trilateral meeting between President Putin, Aliyev, and President Ser Sarkisyan in Sochi, Russia, uh, the tensions seem to have subsided substantially, actually. Um, we were just in Davush, in the border villages, and they said that after the August 9 meeting between the three presidents, there was uh, less sniper fire and less uh, shelling. W what was the reason for, for that sudden upscale of violence, do you think? I think uh, there could be uh, different uh, reasons for, for uh, escalation that uh, happened in, in this sum summer. Uh, as you know, just before these uh, uh, days, before July 26, uh, a group of uh, diversants uh, was uh, captured by our uh, special forces in Kar Karvajar, and now it's a uh, Shaoman region of Nagorno-Karabakh Republic. And I, I think uh, that it was one of the reasons and Azerbaijani side tried to uh, organize new diversions to maybe take, uh, catch some Armenian soldiers and then to change with these diversions. Because it was the first time when uh, Karabakhi authorities said that uh, this uh, diversion and, uh, will not be uh, given b uh, back. Right. They said that they are not considered uh, uh, prisoners of war because yes, they were saboteurs, right? And uh, some investigation began here and uh, our authorities uh, they are going to uh, to bring them to the court. Right. So, and it was uh, maybe I think if we can uh, look on the situation of the point of view of Baku. It, it is a very difficult situation for them because uh, they, uh, they cannot uh, apply to Karabakh authorities asking them to give back or to do something. Maybe they decided to have, uh, uh, organize new uh, diversion and new uh, operation special to have uh, Karabakhian soldiers and then to change them. And this uh, version, I think it's right because last after it, uh, it was information report from Azerbaijan when uh, Vice Prime Minister said that they sent through International Red Cross sent a request to the Defense Ministry of Armenia asking to change uh, uh, Karim Petrosyan. Uh, who, uh, he was a villager from Chinari who had uh, crossed over the border by mistake and was taken by Azerbaijani forces. Yes. Yeah. Uh, his body, uh, they can uh, they try to change. Uh, and also fam family from Armenia who crossed border a few months ago 
to change with this uh, uh, to their sons who are in jail here in, in, in Karabakh. So this may be uh, one of the, uh, the reasons. reasons and uh, this information could be confirmed, this version, that possible. Another reason could be that, you know, last years a lot of uh, armament was by, by Azerbaijan. Maybe they feel, felt more strong than them and they try to test their strength. Test, huh? test uh, our positions, uh, try to understand uh, and to find our weak, uh, weak, weak places in all, all on the line of contacts, etc. But uh, when they tried and it was uh, no results, they tried again and again and uh, our army uh, uh, showed that uh, it's strong army, they can protect borders and they also gave uh, adequate response. response and also sometimes asymmetric uh, answers. Uh, that time tensions uh, um, uh, at first time it was increased and then uh, it was uh, difficult and dangerous dangerous sit situation and after when appeared this information that uh, Russian president uh, president Putin he invited uh, two presidents to Sochi uh, when appeared this information these tensions uh, decreased um. As I said in the beginning, this is uh, September 2nd was the September 2nd, 1991 was the Declaration of Independence for the Republic of Nagorno-Karabakh. 23 years. Yeah, this is um, also uh, we, of course, we are uh, celebrating it like the Day of Independence, Day of Karabakh. But in reality, this is Day of Proclamation of Nagorno-Karabakh Republic. It was the after the referendum the in December. Of, uh, independence is uh, 6th of January. Uh, 1992 so yeah but we 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 celebrate the 2nd of yes. September yeah so for your information and for <laughs> because after the proclamation there was a referendum that took place in December of the same year and then it was in January 6th the, the official right um, but 23 years um, of trying to establish institutions trying to establish democratic institutions uh, you know, oftentimes we hear the saying that Gharapagh is not a conflict, it's a country. It's a country that has schools and universities and businesses and industry. Uh, it has a civil service. Uh, it has libraries and museums and cultural uh, exhibitions. Um, oftentimes we forget. We see it as a conflict only and we don't see that there are people that are living on this land. Um, who want peace. What do you see in the coming years? I mean, how do you see the status quo holding or do you see some hope for some kind of resolution to the conflict? I think, uh, of course, Karabakh is more known as conflict in, because it appeared uh, in, in the international media because conflict was here. And uh, it's very uh, important for journalists from uh, Ar Armenia and Karabakh and uh, our friends to show also Karabakh not only like conflict zone, but the country where people are living, uh, educating, we have culture, etc., etc., to, to show the all sides of life of, of the peoples who are, who are living here, the citizens of Artsakh Republic. Uh, speaking about the future, I think uh, that uh, there are not so big hope uh, for resolution uh, this conflict with participating of all three parties to the conflict because we know positions uh, of conflicting parties, we know the situation, uh, the policy of uh, peoples in, in power in three countries. Uh, having this proposition, it's difficult to think that uh, in, in two months or in 
one, two years, it's possible to reach some agreement. But it's possible to uh, uh, have a more stable situation. It's possible to uh, minimize these tensions uh, using, uh, some, for example, peace, uh, uh, some measures, uh, confidence building measures, having people to people con contacts presidents can meet from time to time etc because this all uh, ha have influence on the situation uh, on the other hand uh, we two armenian states and our diplomacy and our uh, armenian uh, armenians in diaspora our uh, lobbyist uh, structures they have to work on the direction direction of international recognition of Nagorno-Karabakh Republic, and uh, I am not direct. Uh, I uh, few years ago it was suggestion to have, uh, let's say, two tracks in in the uh, Karabakh problem resolution. In one hand, we can continue negotiation with Azerbaijan within OSC, etc., etc. In other hand. We will. Uh, it was uh, important to start new track, new new process of international recognition of Karabakh, not directly connected, uh, connecting this with uh, with negotiation process. But moving forward for the recognition, the official recognition of, of Karabakh as a state. As a state, because uh, uh, it could also it, it's it's good uh, it will be uh, uh, will bring some benefits for karabakh and security reason because uh, international recognition of uh, countries uh, last year showed that this is very effective mechanism for uh, having peace and stability in conflicting zones we saw it in in balkans we know uh, what happened in, in South Ossetia, Abkhazia, and we know that the military way in, uh, of solution is closed there, and it's impossible to imagine that Belgrade can start new war against Pristina or, uh, because these countries recognized and they have guarantees from international community or uh, some uh, centers of the power. Uh, on the other hand, if we uh, continue the, uh, to work in this direction, it can have positive influence on the peace process, in negotiation process, because uh, it can make Azerbaijan more flexible and uh, they can understand that if uh, will be uh, will uh, continue this hardline policy and uh, sp uh, try to speak with us uh, in a position of force of using of force or it will not uh, bring uh, results for them right so, so a political solution is what is needed and not a military solution to the conflict yes of course uh, i think uh, military solution is not solution right for 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 any of the sides i believe yes, yeah I, I think we have to work in uh, using political means and uh, international recognition of Karabakh and uh, work on these directions, this is political process that can have uh, positive influence on the uh, Minsk process, let's say. Uh, Masis, thank you very much for taking the time to speak with us today. Uh, happy Independence Day for the Republic of Nagorno-Karabakh, and I hope that when we meet again sometime in the future, we will have uh, better news, perhaps more news like the California State Assembly resolution that was passed on August 28th, recognizing the sovereignty and independence of Nagorno-Karabakh. So thank you very much. Thank you for congratulating us. I think this celebration is not only for us, for citizens of Nagorno-Karabakh Republic, but for all Armenians, because in uh, September 2, 1991, was uh, established or proclaimed Second Armenian State, and then this state was defended by difficult means uh, uh, by our for uh, brothers and sisters from Republic of Armenia, from uh, Armenian diaspora, and uh, up today, 
we feel the support from outside and uh, I think uh, this support will help us to increase our security and have a more prosperous country. Thank you. Thank you. I'd like to remind our viewers that my guest was Masi Smailian. He is the chairman of the Public Council on Foreign and Security Policy here in Nagorno-Karabakh. Stay with CivilNet.